Hi, I'm Anna Maria Tremonti, and this is more. So I'm used to speaking to people whose lives are way outside my own experience. But the person I'm talking to in today's episode really lives in another world. Elle Mills is full-on YouTube generation. She's got her own channel, Ella the Mills. She has almost 2 million subscribers. She's what a lot of young people today aspire to be, a YouTube star. And at 21, this is how Elle makes a living, and a good one. She's got an agent, she makes appearances, she's brokering deals. She got this far by putting out a lot of videos of life-size pranks. Perhaps you need a refresher. Last time mom pissed me off, I turned her house into a frat. Last time Alina pissed me off, I illegally married her boyfriend. And the last time you pissed me off, I invited all your exes over for a slumber party. But she also shares a lot of really deep, personal, and sometimes painful moments in her life. She first came out as bisexual on YouTube, and she's opened up to her followers about her struggles with mental health and disordered eating. What I've done to my body, it's not healthy. Like I said, I don't want to lie about it, but I really don't want anyone to do what I did. Walking into this conversation, I was fascinated by Elle's ability to do that because as a journalist, I've spent a long time keeping my personal thoughts and moments to myself. I don't get how she's kept that camera rolling through some of the real pain, how she seems so focused on it and yet so blissfully unselfconscious all at the same time. I wanted to ask Elle about being so vulnerable in public. And what I learned was pretty surprising, not what I was expecting. And you might hear this in my voice, I was a bit hesitant, kind of nervous, I think. I, I can't really put my finger on why, but I almost felt protective of her and intimidated by her at the same time. And just a heads up in case there are sensitive ears listening, we don't beep, we just give you a warning. There are gonna be a few curse words in this one. Here we go, here's my conversation with Elle Mills. Hi, Elle. Hello. I really wanna thank you for doing this. I have never talked to a YouTube sensation before. <laughs> I wouldn't say that. I was going to say, is that how you, is that what you call yourself? No. Uh, no, I just say YouTuber. I feel like it, it sound, uh, I would sound really full of myself if I said YouTube sensation. And you're not full of yourself. I, I know that because no. I, 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 I've been watching. Um, <laughs> how long have you been in the game now? Um, I, I'd say around like two to three years now. And why? Why did you, what, what was so attractive to you to do this youtube yeah um well i mean growing up that was that was like my form of entertainment like i didn't really watch tv shows too much and uh, movies it was youtube and i so i grew up being a fan of a bunch of youtubers and so um just has kind of always been the dream for me um to you know make videos and have people want to watch them because you were like you were just a kid, rather you were twelve or something, or even younger when you started playing around with video. Then, yeah. Right? yeah, yeah. I was like fourth grade when fifth grade, I think, when I first made my first video. Um, and yeah, from then it's just kind of evolved. And and so, like, what was it that made you want to keep on going? I feel like um, I I kind of I did believe in myself. I feel like I felt like I had a bit of talent, uh, something that like my classmates didn't have um because a lot of my classmates also wanted to make youtube videos but i felt like i had this passion and i felt like i kind of knew the basics early on and so um and it was something i i thought was really fun and so i just kept on doing it and doing it and i felt like there's like i i feel like i had this realization right right after i graduated high school because i was about to go to university and i was like uh i really want to YouTube is like the ultimate dream. And I was like, oh, it's just unrealistic. And then I thought about it. I was like, everyone I've watched has started off at zero subscribers. Um, and so it is possible. And so I kind of like really like lived by that and uh, just kind of posted every week and stuck to it. And it kind of worked out in my favor. Mm -hmm. uh, you really put a lot of thought into it. Mm -hmm. Like behind the scenes then. Mm -hmm. um, and you dropped out of university to do it this full time, though, didn't you? Like you started yeah. university. Yeah, no, I, I was uh, I was at a uh, University of Ottawa for a semester. I was uh, in business. Um, it was just not something I liked. I wasn't I wasn't very good at it. Um, and around that same time during that first semester, um, the numbers like I the numbers on YouTube started to pick up. Um, it definitely was not at a place where it was 
warranted to drop out. Um, but uh, I felt like I th- um, school was kind of like holding me back from like putting a lot of full effort and time into it. And so I kind of like made a compromise with my parents. It was like just like one semester off um, was the initial deal. Um, but by the end of that, uh, by like the summer of 2017, um, it was my full time job. So I never went back. It's, it's almost like a degree in business, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> a different yeah. way to learn business because you, uh-huh. you knew a lot. In yeah. The end. Yeah. Uh, let's talk a little bit about um, your work because like you are, your channel is filled with pranks on your friends and family. At one point, you kidnap your brother. Mm-hmm. You try to find your mom a stepdad on Tinder. Mm-hmm. Were you always a prankster? I don't think so. Um, I've definitely, I've always been mischievous. I actually, yeah, yes. I, I, but I always, I'm not, I don't feel like I push the limit in ways that normal pranksters do. Um, and, but like in high school, like I, like I remember like, for April Fool's prank, I I uh, snuck into the school at nighttime and um, I covered my t- t- teacher's classroom with photos of me all around. And so, like, it's always kind of been a thing. And I, I like I do like playing a little jokes here and there. Um, but I definitely think I've escalated it the amount I do uh, because of YouTube. What do you think it is about your family that makes them such good victims? <laughs> I think they're just such characters. Um, I I find that there's still there's definitely relatability. Like my brother, he's kind of uh, how to uh, I'm trying to the PG word of it is just like a jerk. Um, yeah, he's just kind of like a jerk, and I feel like people enjoy seeing me kind of get my revenge on him. Uh, my mom is like quite the character herself. She's like. She kind of acts very young and wants to be like, and she always just gets really mad at my brother and I, and I feel like there's a relatability, but also they're very unique in their own. And so people like watching um, that because they can picture their families in the same position. Yeah, yeah. And by the way, it's a podcast. I don't think you have to be PG. I think you can be okay, yourself. Yeah. Oh, good. <laughs> I was going to say he's an asshole, but yeah. <laughs> I, I, I don't know if that's true, I, you know, but uh, don't be PG. Be yourself. Mm-hmm. You know, it's good. funny. I, I really like your mom. Oh, yeah. I want to know more about your mom. Yeah. I, I like her through your videos. Yeah. I'm a, I'll tell her you said that. But yeah, she's like she's very she's very sweet. She's a I, I, I don't feel like I've met anyone else like her. Um, yeah. I mean, like she's she was born in the Philippines. Um, and then when I married my dad, they moved to Canada. Uh, and she's a really hard worker. Uh, very stern. Um and she's uh, definitely been, was a strict mom early on, and then she definitely loosened up when my brother and I became teenagers. And, and now it's more fun to like poke fun at her um, and kind of like make fun of how stressed she always is and stuff. And I don't know, she's a fun time for sure. Uh, she's fun to laugh at, but also laugh with. You, so you you don't have that rebellion thing going on with your mom, right? Like you're not uh, I, like I know I know that you know sometimes yeah. you can have some stuff going on there, but but it looks like you get along really well. Like, yeah. you know, some people don't, right? At no. certain points in their life. No, 100%. I feel like my brother and I, although it may look from the outside in that we're really rebellious, but I, I feel like we're, we we know we know our limits and how far we can push it. And um, maybe more so my brother is the more rebellious one. But uh, yeah, we, I think she raised us pretty well and we, we know, we know the rules. And so that we don't really fight or anything. So let's talk a little bit more about um, your your great success. So you go from a, like a, what you had about seventeen thousand subscribers, then you you went to a more than a million in a year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. What was that like for you? It was crazy. Um, like I said, I grew up watching YouTube, and so that was like the ultimate dream for me. Um, and so. Um, yeah, I, I remember like that's I had around like fifteen to seventeen thousand at the beginning of the year, and that's when I dropped out. And so it was a little bit of a time crunch for me because I felt like I had to prove myself to my parents to prove that this is a, a legitimate thing. And so um, I worked very hard. I was posting like three times a week, um, and just kept on consistently posting and trying to do bigger, greater ideas. Um, and you know, um, it things started to work out, and I think I started going to more events, and then I my, uh, assigned to my management, and um, and it it was a, it was definitely a lot. By the end of the year, I felt I was feeling the pressure, and I was feeling really overwhelmed. But it was um, I was very happy because it's everything I ever wanted, and uh, it was all happening so fast. Um, 
it was a little bit hard to um, keep up with, but ultimately it was a, a dream come true. And when you talk about management, you had to like but manage manage your company essentially. Is that what you're yeah. talking about? Well, yeah, I feel like it's best to describe it as like kind of like a manager to an actor. Um, so like we get like a lot of he brings me uh, deals and like um, also like uh, helps me like go to events and then like interviews and like and so on and so he just kind of like manages like the grand yeah the grand company basically the the video a lot of people talk about when they talk about you making it big is the one where you came out as bisexual Mm -hmm. yes what was it like to press publish on that one it was a it was a it was a lot I, i remember feeling like uh, my face was really hot. Uh, like I c- felt like I couldn't breathe. It was just uh, really nerve wracking. I was super anxious, um, especially because that was my way of coming out to a lot of my friends and family. Um, and so that I felt like I was more nervous about that. The my the the reaction from my personal life rather than online. But obviously that does play a toll on my anxiety. But uh, yeah, it was a. I felt like once I hit publish and like. An hour in, I felt super good because the amount of love I was receiving was I, I couldn't I, I expected I expected it to be a good response, but I, I couldn't have imagined how much love I was receiving. Um, and so, yeah, I, I, that day is definitely like one of the highlights of my life. The, the, the very end of that, your mom, you know, she comes out of the car, she sees the garage, uh, she sees the um uh, she, you know, and she she hugs you, mm-hmm. and she's kind of off mic, but she says something to the effect of, um, "I I expected this, or I knew this, or yeah," and and it was such a beautiful moment. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I mean, like I feel like my mom was, I was definitely most nervous to tell her because we're not very, we're not a very vulnerable family. We don't really talk about our feelings too much. And so that was, that was probably the most vulnerable, vulnerable moment we've ever had. And so, and having it captured on camera, that's, it's, it's a beautiful thing, but yeah, um, I I knew as soon as she cried, I was going to cry. And so I was hoping she wouldn't cry, but then she did. And I started crying, but yeah, it was a lot. Mm. You're not a vulnerable family together. Like, but you film all that, like, yeah, so that, that sounds like that's that's kind of a contradiction to me. I know, I know. It's it's crazy because I feel like I know what it looks like from the outside in, but once when you're in the family, it's truly not like that. Like, uh, there's certain videos. Um, I don't know. I've made a video about like my mental health and like. My mom and I have never discussed it since, like, ever, face to face. It's kind of just one of these things that we kind of sweep under the rug and we don't talk about it. But she, it's kind of like I'm telling her through my videos, and that's how I kind of do talk to a lot of people in my life, is I talk to them through the videos and uh, hope they get the message to it, and we just never kind of discuss it after, which is not a very healthy way of doing it, but that's how that's how I've been doing it the past uh, two years. And so, uh, yeah, I know how, like, I feel like a lot of people think I'm very um open and raw and everything. But when it comes to the people I love m- most, it's very hard for me to do that. Mm. Does that bother you? Um, I mean, I feel like I'm definitely getting better. Um, it's I, I feel I'm getting better because I've like been able to experience a lot more. And um, I've, I've learned th- like the hard way that, you know, um, just being honest and com- communicative it, it help. It goes a long way. I feel like definitely the people in my family and some of my friends, it's still something that they have to learn. Um, and so it's still a, pro- a learning process. But um, I mean, it is what it is. And I'm, I'm we're definitely working towards towards being more open and honest. <laughs> Uh, it's so interesting because you are like you're so vulnerable in public, and, and mm-hmm. I like I really want to explore that with you that, yeah. that that your choice to be that and the guts to be so vulnerable in public. Yeah, how I, do you do yeah. that? <laughs> I mean, I guess I just don't think about it too too much. I because I, I this is a question I do get, um, and it's. It's in, it's interesting because I feel like growing up, I really I, I can't I can't describe it. But I truly was I did not I was never I never talked about like any other feeling that besides being happy. And so I feel like um, once YouTube started picking up, that's when I started to feel emotions really intensely, and I didn't know what to do about it. And I just kind of like like kept it in, kept it in, and then it exploded. And um, 
I feel like I just can't keep it in anymore or else like it just it just like from the past experiences, I know that it isn't healthy for me. And so even I still find it uh, hard to talk face to face with people. So I find that, you know, talking about it online is a way for me to vent and like get my feelings out without having to deal with that kind of like face to face vulnerability. And so that's kind of how I do it. It's kind of like I have to do it or else it won't end well. Mm. Uh, you know, because I watched um, I watched the video you did. The, the I'm burned out at mm-hmm. 19 mm-hmm. Um, and um I I have to tell you, like I, I I'm decades older than you, and I watched that video, and I so related to you. Yeah. And you talked about um, this is all I ever wanted, and mm-hmm. it's not enough. And I've been there, right? Yeah. But I never would have had the guts, and in fact, I never did have the guts when I felt like that to say a word to anybody. Yeah. So when you do that, like you're looking at the camera and you're talking, who do who are you talking to? Almost like my myself. I mean, it's like a video diary, like a, a diary. Yeah, it's like a, a video diary. Um, and I'm like, I feel like I'm almost just talking to nobody, um, in my opinion. Uh, I, I'm just talking to a camera. Um, I know, and it's I, when I post it, I know there's a lot of people who are gonna watch it, but it's it's kind of hard to visualize how many people will watch it when it's like online like that. And so I try not to think about it. Um, and I'm just kind of like almost talking to the open and to anyone who would want to listen. Mm. And so it's like, and what you, obviously you get people who um, respond back to you and you can sometimes feel the love. Do you ever like, does that, the reaction affect how you go forward? Yeah, it's definitely been a new thing where I'm like, I, cause I've been so honest online. Um, and then I go to, I do a lot of, go to a lot of events and um, do meet and greets and then like, um, you know, just like going out in public, you know, people kind of talk to me about those those things that I talk about online. And, you know, like I said, it's the face to face vulnerability. I I find it it's uh, I'm adjusting to it. But when I first started, it was very hard for me to like comfort someone about someone who's going to do something similar to me Um, because I'm like, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to say. Um, And so that's definitely been a struggle to adjust to. I definitely am getting better better at it. Uh, but yeah, it's, uh, it, when I, I feel like at those, at those events, YouTube events, that's when I, I kind of like, I'm able to really see, um, who, who is watching my videos and who the message is getting to. And so, yeah, it's just been a, a learning process. And who, who, who are they? It's a wide range to be honest, but I'd say similar to like, um, people my age so like there's a lot of older high school kids um people in college um a lot of people in their 20s and but sometimes it goes up to like you know um people in their 30s and um a lot of moms and then like there's a couple of younger kids like 12 year olds and stuff and so it's a it's it's really it's it's it warms my heart that it's able to reach a wide range of people, but I definitely say it's definitely people around similar to my age. Mm, yeah, it's a lot of people who want to be you too, huh? Mm. <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> I'm guessing they do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's and it's interesting too because you have such a happy voice. Oh, thank you. So, and but so when you talk about the things that make you sad and and scare you. It's like that's where the vulnerability really shows, right? Mm-hmm. Because we don't necessarily expect that until you start to tell us. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. But you want to see the brighter side. I can hear it in your voice. Yeah. I mean, that'd be great, right? <laughs> I feel like being happy would just be so much easier. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, the video you did about weight loss mm-hmm. was heartbreaking. Mm-hmm. You reveal you have an eating disorder. How tough was it to tell people that? It was really tough, um, especially because, like I said, I, it's something that I hadn't talked to my family. I still haven't talked to my family about, um, and it's uh, it's something that I feel like people were kind of like in my life were talking about, and it was it was like an elephant in the room for a long time, um, and so to kind of like want to talk about openly about it, but it's a very touchy subject, and it's uh, it's. You know, you have to be very careful about the words you use and what you say and, you know, the message you're, you're you would hope because I feel like it could be uh, there could be a mis- pers- mis- 
misperception is that a, is that a word yeah I yeah okay, yeah other. yeah okay um about um what i'm trying to say and i i hope like you know i i definitely were there were definitely a few edits with that video um and i so, showed it to a couple friends and um to make sure that you know the message is being received properly and correctly um and yeah so it was a it was a tough thing, especially because at the time I posted the video, I was still kind of going through it uh, very much. I was not not over it and having like overcome it. Um, and so it was a that was definitely a tough one to do because I was, especially went to a couple events after it. And it was a subject that people wanted to talk about. But yeah. Did it help or did it make things worse for you? Um. I feel like neither. I, I don't know. Like, I, yes, it does. It did help in the sense that I am happy that, you know, me talking about my own experiences um, ha- has helped other people because I know that's that's been the case. Um, and uh, it's it's I think it's good that I've like have it been like uh, sweeping it under the rug like I had been before the video. Um, and now there's like a bit of accountability about it um, with it being like public and online. Um but obviously, it's still a sub. Uh, it w- well, less so now. But like, uh, it was a, it was a subject that I, I felt like at the time I wasn't ready to talk about face to face to people with people, and so, um, yeah, it was a, it was, it was a tough process. But again, just learning. Mm. How's your mental health now? How do you feel? Uh, quite honestly, um, it's a, uh, it's been tough. You know, it's, it's, it's always a, it's there's ups and downs. Um. I, I'd like to think about where I was last year, and I always try to think about the progress I've made instead of thinking about, you know, if I'm, I'm like, if I'm completely better now. Um, and I've made a lot of progress since last year, um, where I was at my worst. Um, but you know, there's, it's, I feel like it's a, it's a long process. It's, it doesn't go away overnight, and. You know, I'm working at it, and I'm, I feel like I'm more open in, um, in community, c- communicating um, with um, friends a lot more and, you know, trying to seek uh, help. And so uh, it's uh, it's getting better, for sure. Mm. And that's really important for people to know, though, right? Because sometimes it gets glossed over as, you know, I'm better now, everything's okay. But it, it it's like maintenance. It takes time. Yeah, absolutely. you got to kind of – you can move a couple of steps forward, and then you can – take two steps back, but then you can move forward again. But Mm -hmm. that's the tough part, right? And that's the tough part to admit sometimes. Yeah, absolutely. And I feel like that's something I'm still kind of learning. It's kind of like, I'm like, why am I not better yet? And I feel like, yeah, you know, talking about that, talking about how it's still, I'm still not completely better, but you know, it's a progress. It's, it's a very, it's a good message to send out. Does it feel better to talk about it to people in person? Like when you, again, at you know, when you talk to people who meet you and stuff like that, does that help? Yeah, it it, it does. I feel like there's definitely like d- days where I, I just, I can't talk about it, but I feel like it's a mixture. And when I'm in a, a good headspace, it's something I do love to just kind of vent and talk about. It's it's nice someone, for someone to ask, like, how are you doing uh, these past few months? Um, and then I can just be honest with them and tell them because... They could clearly, they clearly know <laughs> from my videos um, what's what's uh, what I've been through, and so um, yeah, it's a, it's it's definitely interesting, and I just feel like being honest and open and being able to talk about it more and more, uh, it's a uh, helping me for, mm. for sure. And and does does the, the the stuff you do with your videos does it kind of take you to another place? Does it help you actually live with what you discover about yourself, like as opposed to just not just, but like to talking about it, like, does your art help you move forward in your own head? In in many ways, yeah. Um, I feel like, especially with the videos where I'm talking about more vulnerable topics, less so the pranks. um, uh, Yeah, it's, uh, it it definitely does. It's it's very therapeutic for me. It's a way for me to collect my feelings and collect my thoughts on everything and like put it all together in like, in a, in a nice little bow. Um, uh, and so, yeah, I've been. I, that's something I've, I've always said. Like the videos are very therapeutic for me, and are able. It's a way for me to process my my thoughts because they're always very jumbled. Um, but yeah, I'm interested in knowing what you think about human interaction versus the video interaction. If how you are, your own thinking is evolving as you keep moving forward with this. Like yeah. does does. How do you see the 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 human interaction 
differently than you did before or the video interaction? I do. I do. I feel like as much as I'm saying, like, oh, I love talking through videos and like and it, it's, it helps me. I do feel like I appreciate human interaction more because of YouTube. I've seen in this like industry, um, you know, people become completely consumed by social media and YouTube and, and all of that. And it becomes more of a toxic problem um, rather than used for good. And I appreciate like people who are able to put a, the phone down and like talk face to face and actually go hang out. And I appreciate that a lot more um, because of this. But yeah, I, I mean, it's it's tough because I, I feel like I, I am a walking contradiction. Um, I uh, I talk about how much I, I can't talk face to face, and so I use my videos. Um, but I, I feel like that's it. There are definitely pros to that, as I've I've mentioned. But like I do wish um, that's something I could work on because uh, you know uh, human interaction is super 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 important. Uh, you you post less than you used to though. Oh yeah, a hundred. And I feel like that's me appreciating human interaction more. Um, uh, I uh, it uh, videos are. I feel like as of right now, I don't feel like this is a forever thing, but I feel like like the hu- that huge breakdown I had was only a year and a half ago, um, and I'm still kind of like recovering from that. And I feel like my relationship with YouTube and my in making videos isn't at the healthiest spot yet. It's getting better. I definitely feel like I've put less important less of my self importance into the numbers and the YouTube views and the subscribers, um, which is why the I'm able to post less, but yeah, there's definitely still, um, almost like a trigger. I don't know when I make videos, it's not, I'm not the healthiest point, a health, healthy, healthiest place. I, I, I get very, very stressed, um, and anxious. And, um, so it's just kind of been working through that, um, and trying to figure out how I'm able to, you know, continue doing what I love, but in a way that doesn't make me super anxious every time. Is that because of the views, like the numbers? You would like you'd watch the numbers go up and mm-hmm. that affects you? Yeah, it's a mis- it's that. It's a it's this feeling that it's all going to go away that um you know, I I like peaked at 21 um that you know, it's just like making sure that because it's YouTube's so saturated. It's so there's so there's so many great videos there and there's a lot of people who are who they're they're like whole life's dedicated to getting millions of views um and that's just kind of not my my end my main passion is to get millions of views my main passion is to you know make videos I like um and so it's kind of hard um because the YouTube does your success on YouTube is reliant on the views and, and that does suck but that's just how YouTube works um and you know I feel like there's also a bit of a anxiety about having people see if you're if how well you're doing online like everyone can see um they could just click on your uh channel and see what your views are at and what your subscribers at and they can and, judge you exactly and so i feel like it's just a mixture of all of that and like um maintaining um consist like maintaining um good views on youtube it's it's a, it's a lot uh to do weekly does it make you rich it can make you rich. Um, it, has it made you rich? It's made me. I'm, I feel like I'm very doing very well for myself at 21, but uh, <laughs> I'm definitely not doing as well as a lot of other people my age um, in the YouTube world. I, I definitely think, um, especially because uh, a lot of people make a lot of money off ads, or AdSense on YouTube, uh-huh. um, in that I have made not the mistake, but I I I, I stuck to it. I, I use copyrighted music in a lot of my videos, so that means I make zero dollars off AdSense. So uh the money I make is through other streams, uh other uh, more outside sources. Uh like what? Um brand deals. Um I do a lot of like uh I've been doing a lot of like act not acting stuff, like uh hosting like other people see uh, other people's series. I don't know if I'm allowed to uh I, well I just did one with uh like uh this uh, company called Cut, um, and I hosted their uh, this their kids series, um, and so I make money through that. And there's merch, and there's like offhanded uh, talking of like speaking uh, engagements, and so just like a mixture of all of that, but uh, mostly brands. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, that sounds like a pretty well-rounded way to do stuff. Mm-hmm. More sustainable in some yeah, ways. Yeah, absolutely. Do you think you could ever walk away from that? Um, I feel like. Mm, yeah, I, I feel like I could. Um, I, I definitely think 
being a YouTuber for the rest of my life isn't the isn't the goal. Um, I think I, I'm not sure what is though. Um, and I, I feel like it's definitely in this industry because I do love. I I'm I'm a very creative person. I, I like I thrive off I've that. Noticed. Yeah, <laughs> um, and so uh, and so I definitely think I'd still be in this industry in, in some form. But uh, you know, right now it's just I've been a lot. A lot of this year has been me, you know, experimenting and trying out other things and saying yes to a lot of uh, outside projects and just kind of like seeing what it is that you know makes me creatively fulfilled. Um, and you know, I'm just taking my time and figuring that out. Because I see you becoming um, more cinematic. Yeah, I mean, I would. That's I would love that. Um, yeah, I I think I I I hesitate saying this, but I think directing is something I really want to try my hand at um, and see if that be cool to do. Um, but yeah. Well, you know, generations before, I think Steven Spielberg picked up, uh, was was making home movies before he was making um, mm -hmm. uh, Hollywood films. And you know, like, this is a variation, maybe it's a new generation of, because, uh, you know, I looked at your, your the Halloween horror film. Yeah. Uh, one that ends in the chorus line, mm -hmm. a dance number, which yeah. was a lot of work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. I, like, I and put, fun to yeah. watch. Oh, like, yeah. Well, thank you. But but I saw that I saw it like like it looks like you're moving somewhere else. No, absolutely. I've been trying to do more. Well, that was my first try at like co-directing because I usually all my videos are just me. I edit. I do um, sound. I do all that stuff. It's all all me. Um, and so that was my first try at working with a crew. Like I had a like there was a sound designer. There was we had. Um, a DP. We had uh, like my friend. She's made a couple short films and made a a, a series. Uh, she's she helped me. It was kind of like it was a bit of like a a work a boot camp. Um, and like because I've been wanting to do that and been reaching out to people, my friends who do do all that stuff, um, and kind of teaching me, um, you know, all all the stuff that I never got to learn because um, I didn't go to film school. But yeah. You went to a different kind of school. Mm -hmm. So you, you, the collaboration thing, are you pretty controlling? Yeah, that was tough. Uh, yeah, <laughs> uh, I, I am very controlling. I find it's almost more like um, I'm also very afraid to share my ideas because I'm afraid they're they're shit. And so um, I, 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 I think there's a mixture of that. But there's also when it gets down to it and I'm getting really annoyed, I, I feel like I'm very, very controlling and I um, I'm very stern on what I want. Um, and so uh, I think just trying to I've been trying to work with friends um, so that it's so that they understand where I'm coming from. Um, I feel like working with someone else might be a little hard right now, but I'm definitely working on it. But I've always been like that, even in high school. It's been hard to work with people. Mm. And, uh, so when when you look at how you started and how much you share, um, you know, you're not the only one. There's a generation of people your age who are looking at YouTube and social media as a way to make a living, as a way to express themselves. Uh, are we putting out too much, do you think, as a culture? Um, yeah, I, I, I think... I think so. Um, I don't know. Because, I again, there's always pros and cons to everything. But I'm at – right now, currently, I'm thinking, like, I definitely want to tone it down a bit. And I think there – I'm now able to see a lot – I'm able to almost look at people who do – not overshare, but who are sharing a lot of their feelings and be like, oh, I don't know how they'll feel about that in five years. And so, like, it's like um, – I don't know. It, it. I feel like we're kind of – in a sense, it's almost being rewarded, um, sharing everything and anything about you, almost being like completely naked online and just like um, expressing all your darkest thoughts. And that's being kind of rewarded. Um, and I, 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 I don't feel like people are rewarding it uh, in uh, – it's like intentionally – like I think they're rewarding it in the sense of like they want to um, – you know, help this person and like, and they're, so they're giving this person a lot of attention, but I feel like that's then, um, kind of like subconsciously being re uh, rewarded to everyone being like, Oh, if you share every single piece of you, 
online, then people will care and love you. And so I think that needs to be toned down a little bit. There's a, definitely a happy medium that we could all meet. Um, uh, but yeah. Do you go back and watch stuff you did before? No, I do not. I, well, I mean, I've, I've, I watch... I mean, even when I watch my coming out video, I always skip part the crying part, but I skip past the crying part, but I do watch like the beginning and then maybe actually I don't even watch the ending. I watch the first half and then maybe like the part where we wrap the house. But then uh, I watch more of the lighthearted videos, but there's some even the lighthearted videos, some of them are just really cringy. So I don't even watch those. You know, it's funny because um, all the interviews I've done, I rarely want to go back and listen to them. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, I don't like know. I have a conversation, but then I don't. I because I'll 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 pick something, you know. Oh, why did you do that? And I'll go like, why didn't you ask that better? Or I don't know. It's that it, like it has a it has a different life in my head than it does in somebody hearing it. Yeah, and, and it's kind of like I did that. Now I don't I don't want to hear it like someone else might hear it. I want to just hear it the way I heard it in my head or something. Yeah, yeah. it's like a protection thing. Mm-hmm. I get mad at myself. <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> I feel that. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I mean, no, I, I, I don't know. I, I couldn't do that. I, I, yeah. I mean, like, if I do watch it, I can't. No, I actually really can't think of a time I watch it. I feel like I just recently watched my the the Halloween one, but uh, I, I did it mostly when I hear a compliment. Someone's like, "Oh yeah, that was good." And I go back and kind of watch it with that with that in mind. I'm like, oh, they thought this was good. Are there are there any you regret doing? Are there that, videos? Videos, yeah. Um. Oh yeah, hundred percent. Your, your sister's boyfriend. Oh, that one. The, uh, I legally I don't know. married. I mean, in theory, I do regret it, but. I feel like it's a f- such a funny it's such a funny story now and it's like such a ice such a great ice break breaker uh for me um uh that I I don't regret doing it but I do now know that I can't go do anything like that ever again or do anything that for YouTube like that but yeah I don't I wouldn't say I necessarily regret that with the, the oh, so you you decided with your sister's boyfriend that you the two of you would go marry in in Las Vegas. Yes. And you want why did you want to do that? I mean, it was um around the time uh where every, I was about to hit a million and I was like I I was getting a lot of attention especially from uh YouTubers I love um and I was like I can't, everyone I love is watching. I need to do something that's crazy and that's never been done before. Um and so I think I was someone that offhandedly said, do a wedding. I was like, oh, my God, I should get legally married um, in Vegas. And I was like, who to who? And I was like, it has to be someone good. And my sister's boyfriend, he's just always down to do s- stupid stuff like that. And so I kind of messaged him. And, and then the next day we were off to Vegas to get married. <laughs> <laughs> really stupid. <laughs> was your sister pissed at you oh yeah no she wasn't pissed it was uh, or was she pissed at him (laughs) i don't know i feel like more him probably um but uh yeah the family was definitely not a fan of it it was a very bad reaction um i feel like i edited it i edited it in a way that didn't make it seem like that but it was like a lot of crying and a lot of um i don't want to be part of the videos anymore and so um, that's kind of like that's when I finally it hit me like I learned I'm like oh crap I cannot do this again and so um, yeah I mean I feel like my sister actually was out of all the family members had the best reaction um, I think my mom and my our oldest sister because uh, I have two sisters um, were more upset than my actual sister because I feel like my sister kind of understood like she she's also does YouTube and so she kind of understood where our mentality was at but obviously she was very hurt um but she took it the best out of everyone Hmm. so what are you working on um currently not a YouTube video but um I've been a uh I just finished uh in I was in LA um I was hosting another series. Um, I don't know if I'm allowed to say, but whatever. I was hosting a digital series for Nickelodeon, so that was fun. I've um, been trying to do more outside projects. Um, you have to keep secrets. This is kind of interesting. I know. I, know. I don't know if I'm allowed to say that, but 
Well, I'll well, find then out. Don't. It's a, like you know, yeah. but but it is interesting, right? The yeah. the the woman who's willing to be so vulnerable in public has to has to not talk about it. I know. I'm very bad at keeping secrets. <laughs> very, very bad. Um, but yeah, no, I've been doing that. I've been um, seeing us a lot of other projects. Um, and I'm, I'm trying to uh, do writing and I want to make a short film. Um, so that's kind of like my next bigger goal. Um, I would really like to try that to write and direct my own short film. Uh, so that's the next thing for me. Wow. Where do you draw the line for sharing stuff in public? Um, there's, I usually never, I actually never share stuff that has to do with other people. So like, for example, like, I don't know, there's, I never talked about my relationship with my dad online. Um, and there's a lot of family members who never, you never see in the videos. Uh, I never talk about that because that involves other people and that's not my story to share. There's, there's two parts to the story. And so I only kind of share my only stuff that revolves around me um so that's one one that's one boundary i've set up um and then from now i'm like kind of been leaning more towards if i want to share something just share it to close friends um um because those are the people that like, those are the people who not to say that no one else genuinely cares about me but they gen you know they're in my life they they you care about me in a different level than what my YouTube audience does. Can um, they keep secrets? Uh, yes, they can. I yeah, Better than me, for mm-hmm. sure. Yeah. Does that mean we'll see less of you? Um, maybe less. Maybe. Um, hmm, I wouldn't say that because I, I, I hesitate saying that. Um, but um, maybe see you in a different way. Yes, definitely. See me in a different way. I definitely just I want to kind of go back to my roots, uh, make I don't know. I feel like I wanted to focus more on the content because I feel like over the past two years, it's become more about me as a person. But I'd rather it be about the content itself, like the, the edit, the video, the storytelling. Um, and so I kind of want to go back to that. You talk about how you keep your dad out. Do you spend a lot of time with your dad? Uh, no, no, I do not. Does he live near you? Uh, yeah, he lives in Ottawa. Yeah. 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 Is that hard, not to spend time with him? Was that hard? Um, no, no. Um, well, it's just, yeah, I don't really, uh, my dad and I don't have the best relationship. Um, so, uh, and really that's just it. Um, my parents are divorced. I live with my mom. Um, and yeah. I see him every. I see him for Christmas. Mm. How old were you when they divorced? Um, I was um, oh, like twelve. I was twelve. Yeah. Is that when you started videoing? Uh, I was around that time. I was a grade. That was a grade six, and I started doing that middle school. Yeah, so seventh grade. Was there a connection? Do you think? I don't think so because I was doing it before. Um, yeah, no, I, I don't think so. Uh, yeah, I was definitely doing, I was making videos and a little skits and everything, fifth and sixth grade. And then I moved to Canada in seventh grade. Um, and I was still kind of doing it then. So, yeah. You moved to Canada from where? Um, I lived in Hong Kong for four years. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, so I was there for grade three, four, and five, and six. But before that, I was back in Ottawa. So you've been around the world. <laughs> yeah, I'm a, a little bit international. Yeah. Um, do you think? If and when you have a kid, you'd want your kid to put their life out on video the way you have? Um, that's a toughie. I wouldn't be opposed to it, but I would not force it. Um, I feel like I definitely would give my words of wisdom um, and let them figure it out themselves, though. Because um, I feel like it's good for people to experience, you know, mistakes because then they learn better that way that's how at least I learn I'm sure if it's my kid then they'll probably have to learn the same way um, you could give your kid a camera and send them over to see your mom <laughs> yeah exactly exactly a prank on grandma <laughs> um but I have a sense you're going to move on like I like just talking to you and mm-hmm. I, I've never talked to you before but I just have a sense that you're already moving to another place I mean yeah I would hope so I, I it's just it's I always hesitate because I feel like sometimes it could be misinterpreted that I'm ungrateful for YouTube but it's not that um I just feel like I've done it um and I feel like I've 
not I've grown and I'm now a different person from where I was two to three years ago. And so we'll see if we'll see. <laughs> we shall see how how things turn out. Well, I have a feeling I'll be following you for a while. <laughs> I, I really look forward to the decisions you make oh, thank um, you. in the coming years. Thank you. Appreciate that. You go, girl. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> <laughs> My conversation with Elle Mills. I keep thinking about how candid she was about not being able to deal with stuff face-to-face with the people in her life and how much she is willing to share with strangers online. What do you think? How much are you willing to share publicly? You want to talk about it? Let me know. I'm on Twitter, at A.M. Tremonti. The hashtag we're using is more with A-M-T. More is hosted by me, Anna Maria Tremonti. The series is produced by Jennifer Moroz. Our associate producer and sound designer is Arman Agbali. Special thanks to Catherine Stockhausen, Laura Antonelli, Austin Pomeroy, and Andrew Norton for all their help on more. Our digital producer is Fabiola Carletti. Our video producers are Phil Lung and Evan Agard. Tanya Springer is the senior producer of CBC Podcasts, and Arif Narani is our executive producer. Thanks for listening. Talk to you soon. There's more to come. <laughs>